Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining and welcome. Our session today is on designing a reusable and flexible DocuSign integration. We are General Networks. We are longtime partners of DocuSign, and we specialize in integration. I'm PJ Schwartz. I'm VP of Sales here, and with me today is Todd Withers. He's our president and CTO, and he's going to guide us through today's session. Todd, before you get started, why don't you share a little bit about yourself and then get us going? I, uh, I'm Todd Withers, as uh, PJ said. Um, I am uh, really a developer. Uh, I've been developing uh, with ServiceNow for a long time and against the DocuSign API for, the, for a long time. You'll see how that's relevant later. Um, but yeah, I am a developer. And so if there are technical questions at the end, um, then certainly I'm available to answer those. Okay, so let me get started uh, with why we are here. Um, the short version is we're here to share the journey we went through integrating ServiceNow with DocuSign and what we learned along the way. Um, the most common, I think, approach to integration with DocuSign is through what's called a point solution, where there's a specific use case where you want to create DocuSign envelopes. Um, but because ServiceNow, the platform that we wanted to integrate with, has a wide variety of modules, we wanted to create an integration tool that was both reusable and flexible, so it could be used in any of the modules. For this purpose, we created an integration app called uh, eSignify. Um, as I said before, we're gonna look at this a little bit and kind of share the journey that we went through in creating that app. And our goal is at the end of the presentation, you'll see the benefits of creating a reusable and flexible integration over a point solution, though I think they still both have their place, but maybe you'll consider that approach for your next project. Okay, from an agenda perspective, uh, we're going to look at uh, what we built, and then I'm going to do a quick demo, but the real meat of the session is in the how we built it. So I'll take you through the evolution that we went through as we built eSignify, our integration between ServiceNow and DocuSign, um, and kind of give you a look behind the scenes as to what our thinking was and why we did things the way we did. Uh, so what we built, uh, the short version is we built an integration between ServiceNow and DocuSign. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, ServiceNow is a cloud-based SaaS solution originally built for the IT service management space, including like ticketing and change management, that kind of thing. Um, but over time, ServiceNow has expanded dramatically to include modules for things like enterprise DevOps and security and even HR and customer service. And along the way, they, they added the ability to create custom applications on the platform in ServiceNow to do a wide variety of business specific use cases that, that their customers came up with. So this is what we're integrating with. And you can see the interesting challenge this, this presents because it does do a wide variety of things. So what is eSignify? eSignify is kind of our name for the integration that we built between ServiceNow and DocuSign. Um, our goal was to integrate in a way that was uh, flexible and reusable. And so we created a ServiceNow store app and that ServiceNow's extensibility model is they have a store where you can publish apps and those apps run inside ServiceNow. Okay, so enough talk about it. I'm going to do a quick demo. And then when the demo is complete, then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more, as I said, about our journey and kind of how we got there. Okay, so bear with me a moment here. I'm going to switch over to ServiceNow. So this is ServiceNow. Um, if you're familiar with ServiceNow, uh, it has uh, several different user experiences. This is the sort of classic uh, experience. It is still a common way that people access ServiceNow. Uh, it gives you access to all the different modules that I talked about before. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to go to the vendor list here, and I'm going to open this particular vendor. So this, this, these are companies that you might work with, and, and ServiceNow allows you to keep track of them. So in my case, I've got this company, Longneck Consulting, that I want to do work with. But the problem is, before I, I do that, I should really have a non-disclosure agreement in place. And so you can see I've got the information here I need to do a non-disclosure agreement, which is great. I've got the contact over at the vendor side, Janice Farrow. Um, so, so she would need to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And then on our side, the head of the animal services department, which is PJ, um, is, needs to sign it as well. So I'm going to have a mutual non-disclosure agreement that I need to send out. So 
normally what you do right now is switch over to DocuSign and then send out an envelope, you know, to get those folks to, to sign it. And then when you were done, you would download that signed NDA back here into ServiceNow. So that's attached to the record. That way, anybody that looks at the company in ServiceNow can see that, okay, we're good to go with this vendor. Um, so in my case, I wanted to automate that process though. I, I, I don't want to have to switch over to their to, to DocuSign to do that. I really like a button here in ServiceNow. Um, but before I show you how to do that, let me actually switch over to DocuSign. I'm just gonna log in real quick um, and show you uh, a DocuSign template that I've created for non-disclosure agreements. This is what I would do manually is I would go fill out this template. It works quite well. Yay. So this is my template right here. You can see it has a couple of assigning roles, a department head and a vendor contact. That makes sense. Let me actually go into edit mode and I'll give you a look at the template itself. So this is the actual non-disclosure agreement. It's just a boilerplate non-disclosure agreement with a few text fields here, like for the name and address of the vendor that we want filled in. Uh, and the rest of it's boilerplate down at the bottom. There's a place for signatures by both parties. So that, that looks fine. So this is what I would normally do, right? I would fill this out and send this off and that would work just fine. But as I said, what I want to do is automate this so that the person, the user here in ServiceNow could just click a button and have the non-disclosure agreement go out. That's really my goal. And so I'm going to show you now how eSignify can help us do that. Okay. So I'm gonna switch over to, I'm gonna take off my end user hat and I'm gonna put my administrator hat on and go over to the Assignify dashboard. So this is the place that an administrator goes to set up integration, the integration between ServiceNow and DocuSign. So I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly. Um, there's lots of detail that I could talk about, but we're gonna run through it quickly because really we're here to mostly talk about our journey and, and less about particularly what we created. Um, so to do an integration with that company table that I showed you a moment ago, I'm gonna create a map. And so what this is doing is this is loading up all of the tables that are in service now um, so that I can integrate with one of the tables, in my case, the company table. And I'm gonna click right here where it says create new map. So the first thing, this is the map editor. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a template. This is all the templates that are available in my DocuSign account. So it's detected those. Um, that's an API call. Um, so I'm going to choose the simple NDA template. So now uh, we've read that template and created this mapping um, that you'll learn more about as we go through the process. Um, so I'm going to change the name of the button that it's going to create. I'm going to do a couple of things behind the scenes here. I'm going to change the file that gets downloaded at the end of the process. But I'm going to pause here and talk to you a little bit about this one. So the you can see that we have detected these two signing roles, the department head and the vendor contact. So that got pulled out of the DocuSign template by making a call to the API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to map these signing roles to fields in ServiceNow. And I can do that because the fields from ServiceNow are over here on the right. So all the fields that are in the company table are showing on the right-hand side. And in my case, I wanna get the department head and I'm just gonna drag that in like that. And then the vendor contact and vendor contact email. So now what I've done is I've said, well, I want the, uh, these data fields in ServiceNow to map into the templates, these two recipients in the DocuSign template, like so, right? I'm going to do just show you one last thing. So if you remember from our template in DocuSign, we had some fields like for the name and address of the vendor. So it's automatically connected those to ServiceNow fields as well here. And so that's just that same technique. So now this thing is all set up. I've got an integration now set up and I'm going to click save. So that as a developer or administrator is all I have to do to set up the basic integration between ServiceNow and DocuSign. So let me switch back to ServiceNow and show the, you the effect. So I'm going to refresh this page and you'll now see that I have a new button that says send NDA with DocuSign. And all I have to do is click on that button it's going to take me to this preview screen. Everything's pretty much set up for me. You can see that it's already mapped the department head and the vendor contact for this particular vendor, and it's going to create an envelope and send it out to them when I just click on create envelope. So you can see that's a very seamless uh, and simple process for the end user. 
Um, they just a uh, few mouse clicks and they've sent out a non-disclosure agreement. And this now is set up for any vendor that we work with, that button will show up and allow them to send out and request a non-disclosure agreement to be signed. I'm going to go ahead and follow this through the process here. Um, one thing I'll mention is that for the sender, me in this case, um, I can keep track of what's going on uh, right here. So I can see that there's an envelope out there pending. It went out to PJ and PJ is my partner. She's going to sign it while we're while, while I'm talking. Um, and it went out to Janice Farrell, our vendor contact. And I'm going to show you that signature process myself. But I can come here anytime to see what's going on with any envelope that I've sent out from this record. Um, okay, let me switch over to Janice's Gmail account, and you'll see that Janice has gotten a notification. This should look very familiar. It's just a standard DocuSign notification. I'll click Review Document. And again, this should look familiar. This is just the standard DocuSign signing experience. You'll see that the name and address of the vendor is filled in here. And right at the bottom, you can see PJ's already signed. I'm going to sign as well and click on finish. And great, we're all done. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to service now. And so now what's happening behind the scenes is DocuSign Connect is pushing uh, events back into service now to keep that status update of what's going on with this envelope. And so if I come into this DocuSign envelope status, you'll see that it's already recognized that PJ has signed the envelope. If we wait just a moment here, we'll see that the envelope will get recognized, you know, that, that Janice Farrow has signed as well, and it will drop into completed, which has happened now. Now. And if I refresh the screen here, you'll see that there's a signed NDA now attached to the record in ServiceNow. And if I click on view, you'll see this is the signed NDA, two signatures at the bottom. And in this case, I downloaded the, the, the um, combined document. So I've got the certificate of completion as well at the end of the document. Okay, so that should have given you kind of a peek into uh, what the integration looks like. Let me switch back to our presentation here. Um, it, one thing I'll emphasize is that that integration approach that you just saw can be used with any table in ServiceNow. And this is what I meant at the beginning by a flexible, reusable integration that we built. Um, it can be used in any table so that you can quickly integrate um, uh, regardless of what your use case in ServiceNow is. Okay, so now the meat of the presentation really is, uh, is in how we built it. Um, so that's what we created. You saw just a moment ago, and we called it eSignify. Um, but let's talk about how we got there. One thing that's important to note is that because of the nature of ServiceNow, we knew from the beginning that we wanted to create a tool that developers could use in a wide variety of use cases. So right away, we had to make one decision, one important decision, and that was to either use middleware or an embedded integration. So with a middleware approach, you build the integration using a third-party product like Zapier or Ricado that sits between ServiceNow and DocuSign, monitors for events in both systems, and then passes data back and forth between the two. An embedded integration, on the other hand, requires that you create the integration directly in the platform to be integrated, ServiceNow in our case. Of course, that requires the platform has an extensibility framework that allows you to do it. Uh, in our case, uh, ServiceNow is uh, really a good tool for doing so. And we decided to build an embedded integration for two reasons primarily. One, ServiceNow provides a rich development environment, and it was really highly capable of creating an integration like this. And two, by creating an embedded integration, we could create a richer experience in ServiceNow with more features and more visibility into what's going on in DocuSign directly in the ServiceNow environment. Okay, so that's what we decided. We're going to build an embedded integration. So with that decision made, we started our journey to build eSignify, which evolved, evolved significantly over time. Uh, we started with simple wrapping of DocuSign API calls, and then we created an abstraction layer. We followed that with template mapping. I'm going to talk a lot about that. And finally, we added extensible events. Let me take a moment to go through each of these steps. So our first step was simply to wrap the DocuSign API calls in ServiceNow with a simple library that we created. If you've ever uh, used the DocuSign API, you know that it's very powerful and very well documented. But for developers in ServiceNow, we created a library to handle things like authentication and error handling and some other details just to make it a little bit easier on our ServiceNow developers. 
The result was that those developers could now make a single one line call to create an envelope um, and it would handle all of those details and it worked great. Um, but truthfully, it wasn't as much as we wanted to do. We wanted to do more. Uh, so we went on and built an abstraction layer to provide a higher level experience for our developers in, in ServiceNow. Um, we created this abstraction layer uh, so that it would do, uh, you know, make the job even easier for them. In addition to things like authentication and error handling, we added status tracking so that as the envelope was going along, people would know what was going on and downloading of the signed documents at the end of the process. So now with one line of admittedly kind of complicated code, um, our ServiceNow developers uh, could create an envelope, keep track of the status as it moved along the process and download the signed document at the, at the end into ServiceNow. So that was great and a significant improvement over just wrapping the API calls, but again, we wanted to do more. So that led us to this. DocuSign template mapping. Um, this is a concept that we introduce. Uh, if you're not familiar with DocuSign templates, I urge you to go take a look. DocuSign templates are very powerful. They aren't just document templates. Um, they really allow you to control, the, the document is in there, but they allow you to control the flow of the signature process in very granular and flexible ways. Um, so it's a really great feature, feature of DocuSign. Um, but what is template mapping? Well, actually, you saw it in the demo a few minutes ago. Template mapping is a DocuSign integration approach where you map DocuSign templates to objects in a host system like ServiceNow in our case. So it's useful to think of ServiceNow, if you're not real familiar with it, as a bunch of tables with rows and columns, right? That's kind of at, at a very basic level what ServiceNow is. And this is actually true for many SaaS solutions, but it's particularly true in ServiceNow. Template mapping is the process of connecting a ServiceNow table with a DocuSign template. So in our case, we had the company table that you see on the left, and we connected that to the simple NDA template in DocuSign shown on the right. The job of the map is to divine, de define the routing of data back and forth between the two systems. So it takes attachments and people records and other data elements that are in ServiceNow and uses them to populate the recipients and data fields in the DocuSign template. Then when the signature process is complete, it routes the signed documents, the certificate of completion, and any data field updates back to the ServiceNow table. That's what the map does. So it really controls that flow of information back and forth between the two systems. Now I can tell you that moving our integration to this level was a fair amount of work. Uh, the reason we took the step is that our developers were doing a bunch of repetitive things as they built the integration for various modules in ServiceNow, and they wanted a release from the dredge. Um, template mapping provided that relief. So let's dig in a little bit and see how the template mapping should work. So this you saw just a moment ago in the demo um, is how you uh, map between a ServiceNow table, a company record in our case, uh, on the left and the DocuSign template on the right. And in the middle there is the template map that we showed you. So you can see how the map connects the vendor contact and vendor email in ServiceNow, right? These two fields to the vendor contact recipient over in the DocuSign template. So this sits in between and connects the two. So this is this template mapping concept that really is, was the, the, the sort of third iteration of what we built. Um, if we dive, beneath the covers a little bit. Um, you'll see on the left here, the XML for the company record. Um, that's a, kind of an internal storage mechanism for, for ServiceNow. And then over on the right, you'll see the template JSON from DocuSign. So for developers, uh, a DocuSign template looks like this big JSON object with a whole bunch of settings. And there's API calls that you can make to retrieve that JSON so you can take a look at it. And that's what we've done in this case. So you can see how the recipient ID from the template is here in the map, right? So that's the connection between the map and the template. And then you'll see the name and email here. This is ServiceNow specific syntax right here, but essentially points at these two fields over here. So this is connecting these up. That's how you make that connection between ServiceNow and DocuSign. Obviously we do this in a variety of ways, but this gives you an example, this map 
definition is really controlling that data flow between the two systems. Okay, so this was really great and removed all that drudgery that we were trying to get rid of, um, but there was a problem. Um, our developers are very creative folks and they would come up with things that we didn't think of when we built that map. And that for them, they were getting 80% solutions and they weren't happy with that because they wanted 90% solutions or 100% solutions. So we had created something that was easy to use. We eliminated all the drudgery, but it wasn't as flexible as it needed to be. And for that reason, we implemented flexible events. So extensible events allow our developers to add just a little bit of script at various points in the integration process. The goal was to allow them to do simple things like mark a ServiceNow company record as approved in the example that, that we did with the NTA, or maybe take advantage of new features in the DocuSign API that we hadn't supported yet, or maybe do something more complicated of which there are countless examples in ServiceNow. So the way this works in the map editor is like this. Um, developers can add what are called map script, just like this. Um, so you see at the top, there are various uh, events that occur along the integration process, like before the draft and after the draft and uh, after we've sent it out and after completion. Um, in this case, I've added a script to the after completion event, and this is just ServiceNow script that will mark that company record as approved but you can kind of do anything that you might want to do in ServiceNow. The result is we've removed the drudgery of building the integration through that template mapping, but we added extensible events to avoid sort of painting ourselves into a corner where we can't get a 90 or 100% solution. So that gives you a look, uh, at least a short view of our journey. Um, what did we learn along the way? Well, honestly, if I had to do it over again, I would have started with template mapping from the beginning. Um, it it really, uh, DocuSign templates are super powerful and because they are, template mapping creates a powerful integration experience. Uh, and by adding the extensible events, it was both powerful and reusable and flexible, which is what we were trying to do. I hope we've demonstrated this as an alternative to the point solution. Um, certainly point solutions are good and appropriate in some cases, uh, but the approach we used resulted in a tool that can be used to quickly implement a wide variety of use cases in a way that's flexible and extensible. Thank you very much. Thanks, Todd. That was really great. I appreciate you walking us through everything there. Um, so now we are into the Q&A section. So if you have questions, please post them in the streaming tool where you're watching this webinar. Um, I do have a couple coming in, so we'll go ahead and start off with those, but keep, keep them coming. Keep adding your questions as you, as you have them. Uh, Todd, one thing that someone asked was, how long did the app evolution take place. So you started, you know, with step one, got through step four. How long did that take over time? Yeah, it was it was about uh, two and a half to three years um, from the time that we were just wrapping the, the the API calls to adding finally the final step was the extensible events. Um, obviously, it would have been a lot shorter journey had we started with template mapping at the beginning. Uh, but honestly, we just weren't at a place where we had really thought about the concept. Um, there's a whole uh, backstory about that concept um, from uh, learnings that we had gotten just working with our developers along the way. Uh, thanks, Todd. And the next question I have is, how are you authenticating ServiceNow with DocuSign? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we use OAuth. Um, early on, um, we were using basic authentication, um, but at some point, um, for security reasons, we moved away from it. Um, so we use uh, OAuth 2 as provided by DocuSign. We actually have two different ways we authenticate. For some background services, we authenticate with a service account. Uh, that can be an effective and appropriate thing to do in some circumstances. But we also authenticate as the logged in user for, for other situations where that's appropriate. Um, particularly if um, like we support embedded signing within ServiceNow. So if we wanna do em embedded signing or embedded sending um, more specifically, uh, then we'll log in uh, using uh, the, the logged in user at the time. Also using OAuth though in the you know, traditional traditional OAuth interactive way. Thanks, Todd. Uh, next question we have is, how can you use this on a catalog item? Right. 
So for catalog item, it really, the process is very similar um, that for a catalog item, what that really the additional thing and that question sounds like it's comes kind of from somebody that knows about service now. Uh, for a catalog item, the only thing that gets added is the catalog item variables show up uh, in that list of fields that you saw on the right before. Um, so otherwise, all the fields from the underlying table show uh, whatever that the catalog item is based on if it's if it's a record producer part in part of the tech talk here. Um, but you'll, in addition, you'll get those variables for the catalog item, and you're able to map those into the DocuSign template in the same way. So if you've got uh, variables in your catalog item, you can map those two fields in the DocuSign template in the same way that I showed you. Hey, Todd, we have a couple minutes here. Would you mind going to uh, the uh, map editor and just showing create new from catalog item? Sure. Uh, PJ is doing a thing of putting me. I'm putting out. you on the spot. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> so in that case, I click on create new from catalog item instead of create new from table. And this is the list of record producers and catalog items that I have in my system in the current scope. Um, and I just click on create new map here and choose a template. I'm just going to choose the same template that we did in the first demo. And really kind of the difference is when I go to like, for example, uh, map the recipients or data fields, um, then I see these variables that show up here. So these are the variables that are on my particular catalog item. So if, for example, I wanted to, you know, map uh, the variable uh, for, the, for the city, um, I would just drag that in like so. And so that was really kind of doing the same thing. Um, but in this case, now I have access to all the variables that were available in my catalog item. Uh, the, the other thing that happens here by doing a catalog item is I can actually uh, create the envelope right away when they submit the item and do things like embedded signing, like so that if I want the, the person filling out the catalog item to immediately sign uh, the thing, maybe it's the department head that's filling it out, then they can, uh, you know, basically they'll hit submit on the catalog item. It will redirect right into DocuSign and immediately send out the envelope. Perfect. Thanks, Todd, for taking that little uh, side trip there. Um, a new question came in. Uh, what knowledge do you need to have for developing an integration like this? Um, well, Eventually, first of all, you have to be very familiar with the with the platform that you're integrating with. So ServiceNow in this case. So when we started, uh, we had some solid uh, ServiceNow learning, but we learned a lot about ServiceNow along the way. But you you need to understand their APIs very well. Um, if you're especially if you're building an embedded integration, you know you're going to be working inside there. Um, but then you need to know the DocuSign product and the DocuSign API very well. Great thing is both are very well documented, documented and supported. Um, if you've not been to uh, the DocuSign API um, website, uh, their documentation is very easy to use, very powerful. Um, and so you have to know that stuff too. So you're gonna need to know both systems pretty well if you wanna create an integration like we created. Now, if you're doing a po point solution, this is the advantage to the point solution. You probably need to know the DocuSign API less um, because you're not gonna be quite as flexible in terms of what you do with it. Uh, but still, at some level, you're going to have to know those two things if you're going to establish an integration. Uh, thank you, Todd. Someone else asked, when is eSignify going to be available for Snow? Where can you find the app? Um, so I'll help and Todd, you back me up here. So eSignify is available now. It is in the ServiceNow store. Um, and you just search by DocuSign and you will see it come up. And uh, one thing you might have noticed in Todd's slides is we have a little giraffe logo on it. So you should be able to see that come right up. Just look for our little orange giraffe logo and you'll find it there. Uh, we do have another question here, Todd. Um, what if the system that you're integrating with doesn't have a scripting language? Right, right. Yeah. So one of the things I mentioned, if you're going to create an embedded integration like we did, uh, there has to be some extensibility framework. Now, a lot of systems have this, like SharePoint or off Microsoft 365 has an extensibility framework where you can create apps. ServiceNow has it uh, where you can create apps. But if you're integrating with a system that doesn't have that, then you really force down the middleware path. Um, and in that case, you're going to use a system like Workato or Zapier to um, really monitor events uh, 
uh, in, in whatever that platform you're integrating with, and then push those events over into DocuSign as envelopes. And then, you know, as things get signed in DocuSign, you'll push information back in. So those tools work very well. You won't get quite the rich integration that you get from doing an embedded approach, um, but it's very functional and works very well. And for a lot of use cases, it's good enough and can really get you uh, a lot of value over having people switch back and forth between systems create envelopes. Uh, perfect. And um, again, if anyone has additional questions, feel free to send them over. Um, I do have one more here about any tips and tricks uh, that you learned along the way when you were uh, working on this integration. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 the first is, um, you know, rely on the, the documented API, get familiar with it. You'll use it a lot. Um, I got bookmarked early on uh, when we started this. We weren't that good with the API, uh, the DocuSign API, and we learned a lot along the way. Um, in addition to the API, uh, you know, if you do searches uh, for particular things you're trying to do, you'll find on Stack Overflow a whole bunch of recipes for how to do specific things that may be uh, appropriate for your particular use case. We got a lot of value from using that, so that was really important important. Um, in terms of uh, tips, um, it, more technically, uh, I guess probably the biggest one was uh, what we call replacing documents. That's not a term that's used in uh, anywhere in the DocuSign API, but it's essentially this, um, this uh, capability in DocuSign to use a template that has like an NDA in it, like the one we saw a moment ago, but to actually replace that document in a particular envelope at runtime with maybe a custom MDA, NDA that you might have negotiated for a particular client. Um, so in addition to just using a boilerplate one, we can actually overwrite that or replace it uh, with, a, with an attached file, in our case from ServiceNow. Um, this is uh, really powerful, honestly. Uh, it allows you to use that boilerplate that's available in the DocuSign template, but also augment it and do a little bit more. Uh, thank you, Todd. I don't have any other questions. Oh, I see one here. Um, is there an online tutorial to help speed up using eSignify with ServiceNow? Well, eSignify, I mean, there's documentation with eSignify um, uh, that's available, but but also if, if you're really interested in eSignify, um, there's uh, there's a quick start uh, package that comes with it um, where, where, you know, we, could, we sort of take you through how to use the product. Um, so we'll get you, your developers up and running or your admins up and running really quickly. And you can also do a trial of it uh, at no cost in your non-production instance, and we're happy to help you. I'll get that trial going if you want to experiment. Um, I think that's all the questions that we have here. Um, so anything last, last comments to add, Todd? No, uh, th uh, you know, thank you for, for coming. I'll just, uh, hopefully you got out of the thing another approach. Um, we obviously didn't use the point solution approach. Um, I do think that uh, the result can be very useful and valuable and powerful. Um, and so hopefully this has uh, been uh, informative for you. And if you have other questions, certainly we're here um, and uh, available to answer. Um, thanks, Todd. Um, yes, for anyone who has follow-up questions, feel free to email me anytime and I can connect with you and or I can bring Todd in. Um, my email up here is on the screen and I'm happy to answer anything that you think of after the fact. Take care, everyone, and have a great day.